Hi there. Today, we're going to take up how to properly test a transformer. Now, I have a three-phase transformer here for our demonstration, but we're also going to go beyond that. We're going to talk about what is the process of testing a transformer, what's going to be the best tool to test a transformer, and what exactly are we testing. So stay tuned, and we're going to dive right in. So I've got a smaller transformer to help us with this segment. I want to focus on three types of tests. The first test is going to involve testing both of these coils. I want to make sure that the coils are intact, meaning that I should see a specific amount of resistance. If the wire or the winding was damaged, the wires could have opened up and the coil as a result is not, no longer functioning. So I want to test the primary side of my transformer. So on this particular transformer, here are the ends of it. So I would take a test to check to see if I've got resistance or continuity on the primary. And I would do the exact same test for the secondary winding where the leads are on this side. So that's test number one. Test number two, I want to make sure that these coils are electrically isolated from the core. The core is basically all the steel and it's going to be attached to a frame, just like what we have here. And that's going to be bonded to a ground. I got to make sure that this winding, both primary and the secondary, that there's no continuity between here and ground. So that's going to be test number two and it will be performed on both coils. And finally, that brings me my, to my last test. The last test is I want to make sure that there is no electrical connection between the primary and the secondary windings. Now, it's a simple enough test, but what's going to be the best tool for this? So talking about what is the best tool for measuring and testing a transformer, ultimately what I want to do is I want to check for any kind of current leakage. Now, most people already have a digital multimeter in their kit. And yes, I could use the digital multimeter. The problem is, is that the way it's set up internally, I'm only checking for the resistance or continuity. But it's more than that. What I want to check is the transformer's ability to insulate current and to withstand voltage. Because voltage is pressure. And it makes more sense that we actually test using voltage as opposed to just uh, measuring for resistance. And that's where we come in with this guy. This is called a mega ohm meter. What we're doing is we're actually going to be generating a little bit of, well, a lot of voltage. And we're going to use that to test the windings. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but Right here, you can see that I have graduations. It is an older style, but I can generate up to a thousand volts. So that's what I'm going to be doing because the transformer here on my right is set up for a 600 volt input. So it just makes good sense that we're going to test the insulation. Now you might be wondering, what does he mean by testing the insulation? Here's an example. This is the typical wire that would be employed to, wind, to create coils or the windings for both the primary or the secondary of a transformer. And it actually has a very small or thin coating or a film which we refer to as insulation. And in fact, I'm going to set up my multimeter and I want to kind of put that to the test. So let's check for continuity. Okay, so my battery is good. Now, First things first, I'm going to pull this and pinch it with one side of the leads. Now I'm not going to touch this side with my, my thumb because that will influence the reading. But what we should see is I've got zero or OL, which is translated as infinity. What's, why am I getting infinity? It's because of the fact that I'm touching the side of the conductor wire, which is insulated. Now, for me to get a proper reading, I would actually have to take out my pocket knife and scrape off the outer coating. And as I said, this is basically a coating that goes on at the time that they're creating the windings and it is actually 
very, very thin, but it is there. And when we have a transformer that's running more current through it than necessary, one of the byproducts of current is it creates heat. And if I have too much heat, it actually affects this insulation where it starts to break down and you no longer have the ability or the coils are isolated from one another. And this is what the test is designed to do. I want to make sure that the insulation is intact. So I'm going to put this back up here. And again, nice thing about this is continuity. So I'm going to hold it. Now I've stripped off that insulation on one side. And now I should be getting something. Yeah, see, I'm actually getting a reading. I didn't do such a good job of cleaning it, but one ohm. So now you can see that it is the insulation or this microscopic film that covers the winding. That's what we're essentially testing at this point. So now I did it with a multimeter, but it's not the most effective tool. I said earlier the mega ohm meter because we're going to generate voltage and I'm going to set things up and I'm going to be right back. I spoke earlier of three tests that we wanted to perform on a transformer, but when we have a three phase transformer, it may seem a bit more complex, but in reality, the process doesn't change. The first test is we want to check each of the windings, both primary and secondary for resistance or making sure that the windings are not open. Well, in the case of my primary, this is a delta connected primary. And my H1 and H2 are actually connected uh, at two points. So I'm actually gonna have to take a reading between H1 and H2, making sure that I've got a resistance value as well as that there's no opens. Now I'll do the same thing three times. Once for the H1 winding, once for H2 to H3, and then the third time, H3 to H1. Now, on the secondary side, we're going to perform the same thing, but the secondary is Y connected. Now, all three of the windings are actually connected together at a central point called X0. All I'm going to do is test between X1 and X0, X2 and X0, X3 and X0. And that first part or that first procedure will have been completed. The second part of the procedure is I want to check to make sure that the windings are electrically isolated from one another, from the primary to the secondary. And simply said, I'm going to take one side of my mega ohm meter, place it on H1, and then I'm going to test to X1, because it's part of the uh, primary and secondary winding and I should not see continuity. If there is continuity, there's a problem with the transformer. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing two extra times, between H2 and X2, H3 and X3. And finally, that last test, where I want to verify that none of the windings, primary or secondary, is going to ground, because that's gonna create a grounded circuit. And in this case, we're going to make sure that X0 is not tied to ground, and we're going to test between X1 to ground, X2 to ground, X3 to ground. Same thing will apply in the primary windings, H1 to ground, H2 to ground, H3 to ground. So those are the three things that we're going to be testing. Now I'm going to set up, I'm going to get the transformer into better position, and I'm also going to prepare my mega ohm meter. So we're gonna be right back. In preparation for this, I've built this cart and I've brought out all of the connections externally for the purposes of this demonstration. You'll see I've got the mega and I've also have got it set up for a test of 1000 volts. So internally when I press the button, I'm basically pumping 1000 volts into the windings so that I can check for current leakage the, um, how well the insulation is going to withstand the voltage 
and if I'm going to see an, uh, an, an open on the windings. So this is set up just like it would be for a regular digital multimeter or an analog meter is that over here I have infinity, over here I got zero, meaning I've got continuity. And the graduations will indicate in ohms what is the resistance. My first test, I'm going to be checking for continuity on the windings between uh, the primary. So primary is indicated by the red test leads. Secondary is black. Obviously, my ground is green, and X0 is white, or otherwise known as your identified conductor. So here we go. I'm going to be testing H1 to H2 of the primary windings. And you see, I've got continuity. So the winding is good, and that I've got um, no opens, and that the insulation doesn't seem to be damaged. So let's go to from H2 to H3, give it a test, and then H3 to H1. So I'm getting consistent readings. Let's move on to the secondary. Now, remember, we're referencing this is a Y connection, so I'm going to be going from X1 to X0. And excellent. X2. Now we're going to finish up with X3. So things look good. So that's the first step done and out of the way. Now I want to make sure that there's no continuity that exists between the primary to secondary. So we're going to switch this over to H1 and then reading to X1. And here, again, I should see infinity. Now, what you'll see is when the red light is blinking, it means that there's power and I'm actively putting in voltage. So, and there's no deflection of the needle, meaning I have infinite resistance. This is good. Let's go to H2. and X2. Same reading. Things are looking good. H3 to X3. Good. Now that brings us to our last. Uh, so now we're on step three, where we're going to check each of the windings to ground. Now I've changed the leads just for the sake of clarity. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the primary, and I'm going to work from right to left. So we're going to start off with ground to H3. Now here, we don't want to see continuity. So let's have a look here. And we can see nothing. And we're going to go from ground to H2. Nothing. Infinity. Now we're going to X3 of the secondary winding. I should see the same thing. Infinity, infinity, infinity. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to opening up the cabinet because I'd like to do a visual inspection as well. Call me old fashioned, but I don't like to rely just solely on my test equipment or devices. You know, a visual inspection can mean a whole lot. So we'll be right back. I'm going to get a nut driver, and we're going to pull off the cover. So we've gone ahead and we've taken the cover off, and despite all of our measurements, we can see that there's visual evidence that this transformer has been damaged. Uh, one of the things that we see is that the X uh, or the H2 right here, H3 windings, both primary and secondary, are intact, but this one over here, the X1, is burnt. Now, some of you might be asking, well, shouldn't we have picked up on that during the process of testing? One of the things about testing a transformer is, with the Mega, I was only able to test it to 1,000 volts. 
there are measures out there that we can test to a higher value, such as 5,000 volts. I was limited by the equipment I had on hand. As well, what I really like about this though, is that what you can see is that the insulation has been uh, damaged. But what happened is when the transformer um, got damaged, it blew circuit breakers and fuses. But what happened is once it cooled down, the insulation it kind of liquefied, it basically reformed itself on the windings. And right now, due to the fact I'm limited by the equipment I have, I wasn't able to pick up on it, and one of the reasons why I'll do a visual inspection. But there's quite a bit here to help us with learning about a three-phase transformer. Well, that concludes to this episode of how to test a three-phase transformer. If you enjoy these videos, please hit like and subscribe. And until next time, please stay safe.